100 days ago, this Ant Empire was nothing more than a single queen. But with time, it evolved and transformed from a mini kingdom to a huge civilization. To understand how we got here, we have to go back to day one. After a recent nupture flight in my area, I released the queens into two test tubes. They were newly mated and had the potential to lead an empire. I think I'm going to name them Shirley and Julie. Since leaving their colony, this is the first time they would be alone. But these queens will be the foundation for an entire colony. They were busy cleaning themselves, so I decided to let them rest. On day 12, I checked the queens once again. Shirley had laid a small batch of eggs. If things went according to the planet, she would look after these over the next few weeks. I then checked on Julie's test tube, expecting to see the same thing. To my shock, Julie had not made it. Out of every 100 queens, only three make it in the wild. Despite this tragedy, we still have a queen with eggs. I'll stash her away and let her eggs develop into brood. After no time at all, it was day 30, and you will not believe what I saw. Behold, our starting colony of Iridoro Myrmex. This first generation of ants is crucial for the survival of the colony. They were hungry and had one job. They had to search for food for the growing empire. If they could find some nutrition, they would bring it back to the queen and brood. But if not, the mini kingdom would be doomed to fail. And we really don't want that. So let's try giving them a crushed cricket and some sugar water soaked in cotton wool. Luckily, they accept this offering, but there's nothing compared to what we will feed them once the colony grows a bit bigger. For now, I'll feed them simple nutrients. By day 45, they were a bustling civilization. All was well until something truly dreadful happened to our colony. A flash flood released by the unreliable cotton rampaged through the test tube, killing everything in its path. A few workers, Brood and the Queen, were among the only survivors. This devastating blow has reduced their numbers to only a few, and I don't know if they can recover after a disaster of this magnitude. Our only hope would be to feed them enough nutrients and see if they survive. We're in luck. Shirley lays more eggs and an additional batch of workers is born. They have expanded to a whole new level and I now think they're ready for a very special food. Let's offer them a live juicy maggot. The ants immediately seize this new prey item, watch their jaws bite into its flesh. I fed them some blue sugar water, but then I noticed something concerning. After months of eating, feeding and working, their test tube has become absolutely filthy. This kingdom needs somewhere to expand and fast. If we leave them like this for too long, the dirt could become infested and a mold outbreak could end them for good. So on day 60, I moved them into a new setup and they're looking bigger than they've ever done before. This species is a predator and a scavenger. Workers forage and collect small insects and also look for sugar sources which they feed to Shirley and the other workers. By day 70, the colony had to become a fortress. But I made a fatal mistake. I had unknowingly fed our colony a mite-infested fly. The insect was crawling with them, and if the mites infected the ants, it would doom them forever, and all the progress they had made would have been for nothing. But to our luck, after a few days, there was no sign of mite infestation and our colony was in the clear. The colony continued to expand. However, with their size came a whole lot of trash. Before long, their entire outworld was covered. The ants had to be moved once again and I could tell the colony was getting way too big for this setup. They were even trying to escape through gaps in the lid, so I decided to let them expand into an even bigger one. This is an acrylic and test tube nest and it's their new home. But before I let them move in, I needed to make some preparations by first painting on this white liquid. When it dries, it'll turn really slippery so the ants can't climb across. I'm also going to be covering the floor in sand to make it look more natural. On day 75, their new nest is 100% complete. So all that we need to do now is move them in. I'm going to start by disconnecting the main test tube and placing it in the outworld. Well, now I have ants running absolutely everywhere, but most of the colony is now secure. My only option is to dump the rest of the colony into the outworld as well. Immediately, the colony tried breaking out, but luckily for us, the escape prevention did its job. I watched the colony explore this new territory, and on day 80, the colony fully moved in. That means we can feed our empire a bunch of food, starting with some green sugar water. The ants completely drank it up, so I offered them a juicy fly as well. The ants swarmed this new food and used it to expand the colony even further by feeding the brood. 
Over the next 20 days, the colony exploded in population. As Shirley laid more eggs and the size of the empire increased, I introduced them to more and more test tubes. Our once small colony has truly become a civilization. Through chaos, carnage, and questionable ant decisions, we survive to day 100. The queen sits atop a fresh batch of eggs, ready to expand the colony to a level never seen before. However, little do they know, a younger rival colony was quietly expanding. Will this new species coexist, or will it challenge the dominance of our colony? 